Well, sorry, my isopulse rant got clipped, but um, when you're uh, loading up this side, the drive side, and you have radial spoking, uh, the, what it, the, the way it compresses, uh, this is the plane that the spoke is in, and the center of the hub is here. And what it does is it it twists like this. So what it's trying to do is it's trying to move this inline point over here. So it's it's trying to um, generate enough of an angle here so that it's not quite in line. Um, that's not very successful. Uh, it makes for a really spongy wheel. Um, <clears throat> the other problem with uh, isopulse is that they're using aluminum spokes, which is why um, they're not crossing here. Uh, aluminum spokes aren't um, ductible enough to bend around each other like steel, so they have to be offset. Uh, if they cross. Well, if you have a no cross, which is what la uh, radial lacing is, you don't have that problem. So over here, what's really happening is you've got the drive side and you've got spokes that are just coming out radially. So they don't overlap each other. So they're all in the same plane, um, <clears throat> which solves the problem of it taking up uh, too much space. Uh, since this is already such a large offset, the center of the wheel is actually about here. So there's not very much room here. So the spokes are at a very shallow angle, which is why a dished wheel is so inherently weak. This is a much greater distance. So you don't want to take any more room by moving a spoke way into here. On this side, they've got plenty of room to play with, so they can go ahead and cross the spokes without them actually touching but it means that they've got to transfer all the force across the hub body. Um, <clears throat> now this does wind up a little bit, which is why these spokes always fail. And I've, I had two friends um, have their um, Mavic Serium SLs fail within two weeks, one of them on the death ride. They're just junk. Just stay away from them. Um, I think Mavic uh, has a very good marketing department and you know they knew that this was going to be a reliability problem but uh, racers don't care as long as they get free wheels and there's an endless supply of them why would racers care so they marketed the crap out of them and you go buy the wheel and you know three four years down the road it's junk all these spokes are fatigued so you have to replace all the spokes and these will soon follow. Um, I noticed that um, um, Zip is, has gone to this isopulse type system where this is uh, two cross, um, but at least they're using steel spokes so they probably won't fatigue. I did a little bit of calculation last night and it turns out spokes are made of 300 stainless. 300 stainless has an um, ultimate tensile strength of about 300,000 psi. Incredibly strong steel. Um, they'll stretch up to 88 percent, which means they'll almost double in size. Um, the real world yield strength isn't quite as much as the ultimate tensile strength. It's only about 250,000 pounds per square inch. But if, when you look at the gauge of the spokes, there's almost a 10x uh, safety factor. Uh, the bottom line is you're probably never going to break a spoke. Um, when I crashed I wrapped uh, a spoke around the back the heel of my shoe and it probably had close to an inch of bend. It ripped the uh, threaded end of the spoke out of the aluminum nipple never broke the spoke. Uh, that was a 1415 double butted DT spoke. Never. Actually take that back. That was a 1417 revolution. 
it still didn't it still didn't um, break the spoke um, <clears throat> so the failure points are really pulling out at the rim which double you want double eyelets if you want reliability there um, and and the, uh, the hub flange um, in terms of this angle um, here there are things that improve it and there are things that make it worse um, this is this is perfect this is optimal 3x is pretty good you know 2x is kind of lousy over to here because this is not a good angle Take that back. This is not a good angle. You really want a 90 degree angle. You want this angle. Um, <clears throat> again, because you're you got you've got basically a stick here, and you want to pull, you know, straight against it, not off to one side. Um, <clears throat> so the things that increase the angle to get it more optimal. Are smaller wheels like uh, 26, 26 inch wheels on mountain bikes uh, make for better spoking, stronger spoking, fewer spokes, and that's kind of con contraintuitive. Um, the reason is because um, as you have um, fewer and fewer spokes, let's say you go from uh, 18 spokes, which we actually have some front wheels that are 18 spokes, to 36. Uh, instead of having a spoke like this and this much distance between, you actually have another one here. So <clears throat> it, a it actually uh, makes it more difficult to get these angles right, and that's why on 36 inch or 36 hole wheels you'll occasionally see 4x spoking on 40 hole wheels which are very popular in the UK uh, you very often find 4x in the rear um, I have 2x uh, lacing with 32 holes um, on my front wheel a new one I bought last year and I don't think it really has much to recommend it um, because the front wheel doesn't bear torque if you have caliper brakes um, you probably assuming that there's enough material here and actually what you'll find is uh, Chris King R45 has extra material and uh, come to think of it so does DT240 uh, they have extra material here to keep this from tearing out um, I used uh, Ultegra 6700. They are very explicit. The wheel is the hub is not warranted against radial spoking. It will tear out. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of an artifact of um, geometry that as you add more um, holes, uh, you know, the, the uh, angles. Um, get worse. It's probably about the only uh, upside to uh, fewer spokes. <clears throat> anyway, I hope that was helpful.